So I am Justin Smith. I am 37 years old and I reside here in the wonderful, amazing city of Atlanta, Georgia. Um, I am originally from Atlanta, but have lived other places. Um, most of my uh, childhood was actually spent in New Jersey, but um, I feel like I also have claim to call myself an ATLian. So I am a researcher, uh, activist, scholar, all those things. And I'm passionate about finding ways to help my community, um, black gay men, uh, stay healthy and live whole and healthy lives. And that's sort of the, the focus of the research that I do. Um, I work primarily in HIV prevention, but I think that HIV is just one of the many kind of health challenges that we as black gay men face. And it's just one of the constellation of uh, kind of health challenges that we have to contend with. And so I'm interested not just in the HIV piece, but how do we think about ourselves as whole men um, and think about how do we have kind of healthy, whole, happy lives. And so uh, that's what I want my co contribution to our community to be, is to think about how do we take care of each other. Um, and so that's a little bit about me. In 2017, um, this is a rough, we're in rough times, you know. Um, I, I think that for all the communities that we kind of find ourselves a part of, whether we consider ourselves to be, you know, part of black communities, LGBT communities, immigrant communities, especially today. Um, so no matter kind of where you find yourself on the spectrum and who you align yourself with, if you are sort of aligned with the forces of progress, you're under assault. Um, and I consider our community to sort of be squarely in the intersections of uh, lots of different battles. And so uh, I think what it means to be a black gay man in 2017 is you have to be ready and willing to fight. Um, and I, I think, I know for me, and I, I know for a lot of my friends, that's kind of the, the posture that we have, is that there's so much coming at us. Um, and it's a little bit overwhelming. You know, I know that I myself have felt um, pretty despondent about kind of the direction of our country and sort of the various assaults that um, we, just as black men in general, are sort of up against. Um, and so I think for me, what I'm trying to figure out is, you know, how do I both take care of myself in this moment, but also um, remain accountable to my community and also do work that serves the greater good? Um, and that's a tough balance, you know. Um, I think that we have a lot of work to do as a community um, in light of kind of the broader struggles, but also just the specific struggles that we as black gay men face, um, you know. And so I think there's a lot. <laughs> there is a lot that we have to, to work on. Um, I mean, again, you know, just to speak about my work and my research, I think, you know, HIV does continue to be a, a major challenge for our community. Um, mental health, my God, you know, uh, continues to be a major challenge for our community. I mean, so many of our brothers are struggling with depression, anxiety, um, addiction, you know, kind of all these things that really prevent us from being our whole selves. Um, but that's, that's not a, uh, that's not because of that's who inherently who we are, but it's sort of how people are responding to the larger conditions in which we find ourselves. And so I think what we need to do is figure out how do we change the context and those underlying conditions. And I think that that will help alleviate some of the intense stresses that we're under. And so how do we do that foundational work? Um, how do we do that fundamental work? And I think that is, at least for me, and when I'm thinking about kind of what I want to contribute, that's what I want to work on. Um, how do we change our communities and the context in which we find ourselves that will allow us to be, you know, the healthy, powerful men that we are? Um, so I'm thinking a very, a very specific um, context. So, um, <laughs> 
So this weekend, uh, I had a lot of conversations with friends. Um, you know, it was Black Gay Pride, um, House in the Park, a lot of really awesome events that happened in the city were this weekend. So I'm kind of coming off of a, a lot of focused conversations about um, you know, black gay men's communities, what does it mean to be part of larger black queer communities. Um, I was hanging out with a lot of uh, black queer women this weekend. Um, and we were talking a lot about dating and relationships and sort of the differences that uh, we've observed in sort of women's communities and also in men's communities. Um, and one of the things that I've noticed is that I think uh, while the internet has sort of provided a media medium for folks to connect and to meet each other, um, I, it seems as though, and again, you know, I'm not a, a queer woman, so I haven't really engaged in those spaces, but it seems like there are particular types of toxic pathologies that show up um, in uh, gay male dating spaces and specifically black gay male dating spaces. So I'm thinking of the app Jacked, for example. Um, and one of the narratives that consistently comes through, if you read Jack profiles, which is, you know, I want to be clear that that is not the sum total of our community. I would be really clear about that. Um, but it is a space in which people often find themselves. Um, and one of the things that I find challenging about it as a space is just how overwhelmingly negative a lot of the profiles are. It's like, you know, um, as Charles Stevens once said to me, it's just like, when you read this, it makes you want to say, who hurts you, you know? Um, and it makes me sad because I feel like what I'm seeing is not really a medium for connection, but it's really a medium for folks to kind of expose how wounded and uh, hurt they feel. Um, and so one of the narratives that comes up in these spaces is that, you know, some variation of black man ain't shit. Um, which, you know, if you think about it, it's like, this is a space, you're a black gay man, you know, you, you want to connect with other black gay men, um, but you think that black gay man ain't shit. So is that something you think about yourself as well? Um, so I, I think that's a major narrative that needs to be countered is that, you know, um, and it goes back to something that we learned from our forefathers, you know, um, we have to believe that we are worth watching each other. And um, that line always resonates with me. And I, I find that there are so many places where, you know, we don't really manifest that belief. House music. So, <laughs> so um, as I alluded to earlier, you know, this weekend, um, Labor Day weekend, Atlanta is just lit. It is just like, it, I, I feel like there's really no other place I'd rather be than Atlanta on Labor Day um, for a couple of reasons. You know, Black Gay Pride is always like an event. Um, and there's other things that I think are cool. Like, you know, I'm a nerd, so Dragon Con is here. And so like, that's always fun. And I'm happy to see that there's so many like black cosplayers. And like, I definitely feel like I saw more of a presence of that this year than other times, um, you know. I love books, so even though I didn't go to the Decatur Book Festival this year, that's also an event that I enjoy. And there's some also like awesome like black queer writers that were you know showcasing their wares and you know telling their stories there. Um, but for me, the the centerpiece is is uh, a party called House in the Park, um, which, as I've told many people and to anyone that who will listen, it is the single best event that happens in Atlanta. Um, it kind of is like. The way I describe it, it's a, it's a black gay party that everyone is invited to. Um, it's like, it's our space, we hold the space, but everyone is welcome to be a part of it. Um, and I, I think it's important to, to mark it as, even though it's not officially part of Black Pride, like, I feel like it's probably the most Black Pride event, you know, of anything. Um, and so that space brings me an incredible amount of joy. So.